Hi all, it's Teresa in Gemma's house. So in my last video, I made some scrap fabric to cover a pillow for the couch to match a crazy scrap quilt that I had made for the couch earlier. So in today's video, I'm going to make the pillow cover and I'm going to free motion quilt it first on my Baby Lock Jazz 2 machine. So here's my scrap fabric I made. I really do like the way it turned out. I cut a piece of unbleached muslin for the backing. And I have a bunch of scraps of my cotton batting. And I'll just piece these scraps using a zigzag stitch on my machine. Okay, so this is the cotton batting that I pieced several pieces together. So I'll make my quilt sandwich with the batting in the middle here. And I like to use these two inch safety pins, they're curved, to pin the quilt sandwich together. And I'm going to start in the middle, put a pin in the middle, and then just one pin about every four or five inches. Okay, so just a few general concepts about free motion quilting. I think it's good to start with a small project first. You might even want to start on a quilt sandwich using a fat quarter, put some batting in the middle, and an inexpensive fabric for the backing. You might want to make 10 inch or 12 inch blocks and free motion quilt those. When I first started free motion quilting, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and I think they were helpful. I got different tips from the different people and I just started practicing, but it was a small learning curve, definitely. So you might want to practice some patterns that you might want to use when you free motion quilt. Practice on paper with a ballpoint pen that moves easily and just start doodling so that you get the hang of how the shapes can fit together with each other. Just keep doing this over and over again and you will soon learn some techniques that feel right for you. Another pattern that I used quite a bit when I was first starting is that doodle, that continuous squiggly line, but I would make little curly cues in addition to the squiggly lines. I thought it was kind of cute. It gives it a cuter look, very fanciful. And I like this pattern a lot too. And keep in mind that your fabric pattern and color and the color of the thread too, depending on the combination of those two, it might be very forgiving that if you feel like your lines weren't so great, they might not even show that much or maybe the pattern of the fabric is such that the quilting on top won't show as much. Okay, so another thing you have to practice is the movement and speed of your hands pushing the fabric around under the machine needle, how it coordinates with the speed of your machine how much you're pushing down on the foot pedal to make the machine go a certain speed. That's probably one of the biggest factors, I think. 
I think what works best for me is to have the speed of the machine pretty high. So I'm pressing down on the foot pedal, probably to the very bottom, and moving my hands more slowly. And you'll get this with practice, how fast to move your hands to push the fabric around under the needle. If you go too fast, like especially if you're going around curves, doing curly cues and stuff like that, the stitches will be too long and it just won't look right and it might start missing stitches too. So you have to be very aware of the speed that you're moving and keep it consistent going around curves and everything. And every machine is different too. My Baby Lock Jazz 2, it's going to do free motion quilting differently than other machines will. And also the type of thread you're using will make a difference. There are a lot of Facebook groups that you can join and there are a lot of suggestions and tips about free motion quilting and the threads to use the issues that came up and how they resolved the problems. So you'll get a lot of good ideas. And I found that when I'm free motion quilting, that if I start in the middle of the project and work my way outward from there, that the fabric won't be shifting in one direction then. One of the quilts I made, I think it was the king size one, I did start in the middle of the quilt and work my way outward along one of the rows of blocks and then I went to the next block up in the middle and worked my way outward from there too. That worked well for me. Okay, so for the top thread, I'm going to use the same top thread that I used when I free motion quilted my crazy scrap quilt for the couch. It says variegated oranges and yellows. For the bottom thread, I'm just going to use this gray. It's not going to show because it's going to be on the underside of the front of the pillow. That won't be seen. But of course, with any stitching, you will see a tiny bit of your bobbin thread as it stitches into the top thread. So you might want to take that into consideration. And these threads are just Coates and Clark 100% cotton for machine quilting. It specifically says machine quilting on it. Also, when I'm quilting, I use these quilters gloves. They have kind of rubber tips. I don't know what it's made out of, but it helps to grip the fabric so your hands don't slip around on the top of the fabric. You can see how worn out mine are from the many quilts that I've made already. These work great. I really do like these. You can buy them in quilt shops, fabric shops, and I think uh, on Amazon too. Okay, so my baby lock came with a free motion quilting foot, and this one's plastic, but I noticed that there is a metal one too, and I think it's specifically for embroidering. It's metal, and the front of it is shaped like an upside down U, and the front is open on it. This one is closed, but it's the only one I've been using, and it seems to work great. I have my tension on four, which is pretty much in the middle. I have to say that when I first started free motion quilting on this machine, when I first got it, I was having tension problems. I had to have the tension all the way up to nine, and it was still giving me problems here and there. It was probably partly my fault too, because I was new at free motion quilting. I don't know what the problem was, but Eventually, the guy who I take the machine to to repair it, he did repair the tension so that it doesn't give me problems anymore at all. So number four on my tension works great for free motion quilting and just general 
sewing too. And I put the needle in the middle, of course. And even when I drop the feed dogs, I put the stitch length down to zero. I don't know if you need to do that or not, but I've just been doing that. And I have a straight stitch here. And just in case you don't know where the feed dogs are, you have to drop the feed dogs when you're free motion quilting. It's this setting right here. So you can see that the feed dogs are represented by these little triangles, the little zigzag triangles underneath the line. The line is your sewing surface. So they're below the sewing surface. So they're not engaged. So the feed dogs aren't pushing the fabric through under the needle. So that's important when you're free motion quilting because you're the one who's pushing the fabric around under the needle, not the feed dogs. Okay, so another thing I always have nearby is a pair of tweezers because when you're free motion quilting, you have to pull the bobbin thread up to the top of the fabric. So sometimes I have to pull the bobbin thread up with tweezers because I just can't get my fingers around the bobbin thread enough. I have my needle down position engaged here so that whenever I stop sewing, the needle will go back down into the fabric. So I'm going to pull my bobbin thread up. Oh, that time it came up really nicely. And before you start, you have to make sure you have a few inches of bobbin thread pulled out so that it will come up. And I'm just going to put my needle down in the very spot where the bobbin thread is. I start with a circle that I go round and round to kind of lock those stitches in. Okay, so when I stop, you will get a little bit of a knot when you stop. And when I free motion quilt for just a minute or two, I stop and I go back and cut the threads, both of them, so they don't get in the way. And you have to kind of plan out your route where you're going to go because my pins that I have in here, I need to remember to take those out so that the sewing foot doesn't knock into them or go over them. You don't want to be going over these pins, that's for sure. stopping here because again I have a pin here I don't want to run into the pin or sew over it I'm going to go all the way up to the edge here to stabilize this fabric and then I'll be able to branch out in this direction and continue going around the pocket and I have the presser foot pretty much all the way to the floor I think and I'm just keeping a nice, smooth, consistent movement of my hands, not going too fast. If you look at my stitches, they're nice and even. They're pretty consistent. There are no threads bunching up underneath there. So all's going well for right now.
checking my bobbin thread to make sure everything's still okay, which it is, thank goodness. So this is why it's good to have some extra fabric around the outside of the piece that you're free motion quilting because when you get into these corners you have to use that extra fabric to pull it in the direction you want. someone would invent a sewing machine that has a bobbin that is using a full spool of thread so we don't have to deal with bobbins running out. If they can put someone on the moon, can't someone invent a machine like that? <laughs> okay, so putting my new bobbin in. After I put a new bobbin in, I usually position the needle back a few stitches from where I left off the last time so I can go over that area again to lock those stitches in. Okay, so there's my bobbin thread right there. I'm just pulling it up. Okay, there it is. And putting the needle down in the same spot where the bobbin thread came up. And again, I'm going to just do a tight circle here to lock those stitches at the beginning. And I'm stopping just to cut my thread so they're not in the way. Okay, so now I'm going to head back to the pocket. So I'm going to take this pin out. sure to hold the fabric down and stretch it a little bit if I need to to avoid any puckering as I sew over the fabric and again I just want to make sure my stitches underneath are good and they are thank goodness Just trying to sew over most of the seams to stabilize them well and it's important to keep a consistent speed you might be tempted to try to hurry to cover more ground that will make your stitches longer and they just won't look consistent overall and I'm trying to avoid going in straight lines with my pattern I'm trying to weave the pattern in and out so that it looks more random.
I'm going to head back towards the bottom of the pocket again. So I'm going to take this pin out. After I take the pins out, I'm glancing at my fabric to plan out my route where I'm going next. thread didn't last very long. Okay, so looking over what I've done so far, I started here, so I have this much finished all the way around to here. So a little more than half of it took two bobbins, and it's because my pattern is pretty tight and I have these little curly cues, and I like a tight pattern like this because when I wash this and dry it, I love that puckering that occurs after you wash a quilt. That's one of my favorite things about quilts. It's even puckering nicely now because this pattern is so tight. And looking at the back, the threads are all nice and consistent. And because this pattern is so tight, it is puckering a lot and it's pulling the fabric in smaller. So that's why I added a good two inches to the dimensions of the pillow size because I knew this would pucker a lot and after I wash and dry this too, it's going to shrink a lot and pull smaller. Okay, so I just finished winding two more bobbins and another thing I noticed on this machine is you have to make sure this bobbin spool is pushed back all the way to the left to disengage it. I found that a couple times when I was having sewing problems that this was actually just kind of midway. I hadn't pushed it all the way over. And once I did that, my sewing problem was resolved. So I wanted to point that out too. So that will wrap it up for this video of free motion quilting. And I hope that was helpful to you if you haven't tried that before. And leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll be sure to answer them. And if you can please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, that really helps my viewership on YouTube to grow. And stay tuned for next week's video where I will show you how I assembled this pillow cover with piping around the outside of it in case you want to try that too. So until next week, thanks again for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>